All right, I'd like to demonstrate a uh, new method, an easier method than using the law of cosines. We can just use a right triangle uh, trig um, the entire time. So instead of um, adding vectors on tail head, tail head, we're going to look at these two vectors, A and B. And we're just going to go ahead and put both of their uh, tails on one grid. So and if you multiply, if you even add a... Um, even more than two vectors. Just put all of their tails on the same grid and just locate them with angles. And so all you need to do is actually get an X and a Y component of that vector. So if you look at vector A, you can think of vector A as either a vector going over and a vector going up, or you can think of it as a vector going up and a vector going over. Either way, it wouldn't really matter. We'll use the over the right and up because we actually have this 60 degree angle inside here in, in that triangle. So um, you have an X value and you have a Y value of the, each vector, and that's all you really need. So I'm going to write down uh, vector A, and then I'm going to try to get the X value um, first. So the X value would be, um, so if I do uh, the X value in this, in this triangle would be the cosine. So cosine of 60 would equal X adjacent over the hypotenuse 70. So cosine of 60 would equal X over 70. So X then would equal um, 70 times the cos, I'm gonna put an X here, X equals 70 times the cosine of 60. And then what would the Y, here's the Y value. The Y component would equal 70 times the sine of 60 degrees. The sine times the 60 degrees. And if I do 70 cosine of 60, uh, that comes out to be like 35.0. And 70 sine of 60 comes out to be 60.6. Now what I have to do with these, I have to put, make sure they have the right signs on them. X would be a positive X, and Y would be a positive Y, so I can leave them just like they are. Now let's look at vector B. I need to get the X and Y components of vector B. So um, I can go over and down, or I could get go down and over to the left, either way. I'm going to do down and over to the left because I have uh, the 75 degree angle inside there. And so I'm going to get the X and Y components of that triangle. So the X component over here would be the opposite of 75. So it would be 80 times the sine of 75. And the y would be this adjacent side here, so it would be 80 times the cosine of 75. And if I uh, calculate those out, 80 times the sine of 75 is 77.3, and 80 cosine of 75 is 20.7. But the problem is here is that this y is going down, so that needs to have a negative sign on it. And this X is going to the left, so that has to have a negative sign on it. So that's going to be important uh, to be able to put your positive. Know if it's going up and down. So Y's, if they're going up, they're, Y's that are going up are positive, and Y's going down are negative. X is going to the right are positive, and X is going to the left are negative. And so now I have my X and Y components of, of A, and I have my X and Y components of B. So how do I add these together to get a resultant vector like R. What is the resultant vector R? This is very easy. All you have to do is add your X component. So this, this X component went over this far, and this X component went over this far. So your final X component will be probably a little bit to the left, right? So I'm going to take 35, so my X would be 35, 35 uh, minus 77.3, and that for that I get a I get a negative 42.3 for my x. My y would be, uh, what do I have? I have 60.6 is the one component up, and then I have a minus 20.7 for this other y component down, and that gives me a total y component of 39.9 positive. So it's going up. So here's my two X and Y components for my resultant vector. So how do I write out my resultant vector again? Well, that's easy. All I do is I draw a new grid, and I put on my X, which my X would be over to the left, 42.3. You don't need to put the negative sign on there because you're showing it going to the left. And then I'm going to go up 
up 39.9, 39.9. And my resultant then will go from the tail of the first to the head of the last. There's my resultant vector. And I can try to figure out the angle in here. Now, the way I can figure out the uh, um, actual vector is just use Pythagorean's theorem. 39.9 squared plus 42.3 squared. And I take the square root of that and I get a resultant vector of 58.1, uh, whatever this is. I don't know, meter, we'll call them Newtons. We'll call them force. So Newtons. Okay. Now I also need this angle here. So the way I'm going to get this angle is it'd be opposite over adjacent. So tangent of this angle would equal 39.9 over 42.3. So you make sure you're in degrees. You take 39.9 divided by 42.3, and you take inverse tangent, and you get uh, at 43.3 uh, degrees, and you'd have to say um, north of west. So there's your resultant vector. That's a lot easier than the tail head method. You just get the components of each vector and add the x values up, add the y values up, and then redraw your final uh, resultant. And you don't have to use any law of cosines or law of sines. You can just use normal right triangle trig all the time to, to figure these things out. Okay, so that's kind of an introduction of how to do components, X and Y. We're going to take it a little bit further because we do this just a little bit differently so it works out really easy all the time for us. Um, one of the things that is a struggle for students is to remember is the x value going to the right or to the left? Because you have to actually have to put the negative signs on there. If you, uh, you know, if, if it's going to the left, you have to put the negative signs on the y's if they're going down. But maybe we don't want to actually have to uh, for, uh, remember to put the negatives or positives on. So how would we do that? Okay, let's do this problem over again. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the angle we have to the vector is the angle all the way from north from north all the way around to that particular um, to that particular vector. So I'm going to take from north to A, that would be uh, 30 degrees. And then I'm going to do from north all the way around to there, which would be, let's see, 180 and then 75. 180 and 75 would be 255, I think, right? Yeah, 255 degrees. Okay, so um, what we can also do there, so if we're, if we're going to do it that way, um, when we do our sine and cosine of these angles, um, it's always going to give us the value negative or positive, just automatically. So here's how we're going to do the component methods to make it come out right all the time. You're going to draw all your vectors onto your one grid. You're going to find the angles around from north clockwise around to every single vector, and then to write out any any of these vectors, let's do a vector A. So vector A is going to always be the vector, so in this case it's 70, times the sine of the angle. Okay, now this is always going to work every time. You can always use sine to figure out the x value if you're going from the angle from north around to the vector. So Another thing that we're going to add in here is instead of calling it x and y, what we call it, we, have, we put units on these x and y uh, values. And for the x, we call it an i hat. So it's an i. Instead of a dot on the i, we use a little hat, a vector hat. And it's, instead of a, a j for the, for the y value, we're going to use what we call a j hat. And instead of a dot again, we use a little vector, which we call a hat. So these are i hat and j hat are going to be units for our x and y values. Um, that's just a little uh, kind of a nomenclature. It's not that big of a deal, but I do want you to see it and recognize it because you'll go to, on to other things in math and you'll see i hat and j hat and you'll wonder, what's that? Well, the i hat is x and the j hat's y. It's, it's just as simple as that. So the vector a is going to have 70 times the sine of 30 i hat plus 70 times the cosine of 30 j hat. So i hats are always going to be sine and j hats are always going to be cosine. Always sine is i hats are always going to be sine, j hats are always going to be cosine only if if you measure the angle from north around to that particular vector. 
That's how you have to do it. If you use, a like last time, we used this 60 degrees down in here. Well, then we, we didn't do it. We had that. We could still do our I hat and our J hat, our X and our Y value, but we had to go ahead and assign the positive or negative just looking at the picture and knowing. But here, we're not going to have to do that anymore. It'll automatically come out and be negative or positive for what we need. So vector B, what's vector B? Vector B is going to be 80 sine of 75 I hat um, plus 80 cosine 75 J hat. J hat. That's pretty ugly. Sorry about that. Okay. So um, the way this worked out is, and we already figured these out, um, 70 sine of 70 sine of 30 for the uh, for the x value that I hat was was 35.0 I hat. And then we had plus um, 60.6 j hat. And you should do the math on these and make sure that comes out right. And then for vector B, for our x, we ended up having a negative 77.3 i hat. See, that's what 80 sine of 75 was. 80 sine of 75 um, is, I'm not sine of 75. Sorry, that's, oh, oh, no, sorry, I messed this up. Yeah, not 75. Remember, that's the angle from north. So this should have been 80 sine of 255, and this should have been 80 cosine of 255. These angles up here, are, okay, the 30 degrees is from north still. But these should have been 255. So earlier, what I had was, I, I earlier in the first lecture, I had 80 sine of 75. And that gave me um, an angle, but it was a, it was a, positive value. So now if I do 80 sine of 255, I actually get the negative 77.3. I don't have to actually put the negative sign on it. And then we have um, 80 cosine of 255, and that is a negative 20.7 j hat. So the way we're going to do the component vectors, you're going to draw your vectors on there. You're going to measure the angles from north around to those vectors. And then each vector is going to be the vector times the sine of the angle, i hat, and the vector cosine of the angle, j hat. And that'll work out every single time. It'll always work out that way. And so now to get our resultant vector, we just simply add these up. It's really easy. We add them up, and we get a negative 42.3 i hat, and we get a plus 39.9 j hat. And again, we can, we can draw our grid, and we can go... Over to the left, 42.3. Again, you don't have to write the negative on it since we're drawing to the left. I can go up 39.9, and I can draw my resultant in, and I can use Pythagorean's theorem, and I can also figure out with the tangent, I can figure out what the angle is. So um, now remember that angle, if we go back and look at it, that angle was 42.3 or 43.3 degrees north of west. So um, so that, the resultant vector came in like this, and that was like 43.3. So what we want to do, maybe, is we can write 58.1 newtons. We can say it's 58, I'm running out of room. Okay, 58.1 newtons at, and then what we want to do is we want to take a two, we want to go all the way from north. So 270 plus the 43.3 would be at 313.3 degrees. So if you give me the angle from north, okay, and this is how we're going to do it on the Jedi trials and on the E-Labs. If you give me the angle from north, all you have to do is just put DEG, degrees. You don't have to tell me north of uh, west or south of east or anything like that. You can just say, give me the, the magnitude of the vector and give me at from north, a bearing. This is called a bearing or a heading. So I have 270 degrees to, uh, to there, and then I have 43.3 degrees more to the final resultant vector. Okay, that was all uh, pretty ugly. I hope everybody followed along. Sorry I really messed up on vector B when I was supposed to be doing the 255 angle all the way around there. Um, but hopefully you, you saw that mess up and corrected that yourself. So this method is actually very, very easy. We're going to have several more videos to kind of practice this through. You put all your vectors on the origin all on the same grid, and you draw the angles from north around to every single component, and then you just write out your vectors in component form. 
And the vectors are always going to be the vector times the sine of the angle i hat plus the vector times the cosine of the angle j hat for every single vector. Get those components, add them up, get your components of your resultant vector, redraw your resultant, and use Pythagorean's theorem to find out your magnitude and the tangent to figure out the angle, and you'll have your uh, vector. And if ever I have two vectors in a problem, I usually use a uh, tail head method. But if I have more than two vectors, there's no way I'm using that method. I'm going to use a components method every single time. It's going to be super, super easy. So follow the next several videos, and we'll practice this over and over again until it makes uh, sense to you.